Hi everyone, welcome to Church Jamaican. Church Jamaican is on our way to the community of Belmont in Bluefields, Westmoreland, Jamaica to visit the Bluefields organic farm, produce tours and homestay. This is our first time to an organic farm that offers relaxation and promoting the beauty of Jamaica and its culture. Bluefields Organic Farm produced tours and homestay established 2013. Come and chat with Tanya. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Welcome to the Bluefields Organic Farm. My name is Keith Weatherburn. I'm the main person on the farm in terms of the person who helped to organize and manage things on the farm. The farm is situated on two and a third acre property, and we started in 2013. In 2013, when we started, it was pretty much what we would call, in Jamaica, we call it standing with our mini forest. The entire area was uh, fully um, just like you were on, on my left over there. That's how um, it looked and uh, what we did here. Yeah. Just like over there, that's how it looked when we got here. So we had the task of deciding what to take out and what to remain. Me and we took out a, lot of, we took out a number of trees and we have replaced them with many trees in return. And um, the trees that we took out, we used them for furnishing and furniture. Well, let me just give you a backdrop before we get to the farm. Pretty much the area here, it's coming back from the plantation here. Here we have, close to us we have the Bluefields property, we also have the Shafton property, we have Mount Edgecombe. And all those properties from the plantation area, so this area is no stranger to agriculture. And during the plantation area you could find indigo, you could find, you could find pimento, a little bit of sugar cane, a little bit of cotton was grown in this area. But one thing for sure is that these lands that we are now on, these are more the marginal lands. And um, these lands, because they were more marginal, these lands weren't really used for much, used much in the cultiv um, in the plantation era. Um, when we took over this land in 2013, before we decided what to keep and what to throw away, we also had to decide um, about organic farming. And why organic farming? Because organic farming provides a, a viable alternative compared to conventional farming, which is one of the farming methods mostly used today but as many of us would have been aware organic farming is otherwise called traditional farming so this is really where we are coming from and um, it has this genesis in that no more than ever people are beginning to realize that the food that they eat has direct connection to their health and well-being and uh, persons are becoming more conscious about that Hence, organic farming is even more relevant now more than ever. So here on the farm, we have about 36 different fruits and vegetables, different stages of development. Um, right now, as we look across from me, for example, we look over there and my, just in front of us, this is what we call Barbados cherry, our garden cherry. Pretty much those cherries, um, when, they are, when they are young, they are green looking and as it gets ripe, they are red cherry. They are rich in vitamin C, rich in antioxidant. If you're talking about fighting and uh, building your immune system this is one of the food that presents that opportunity so this is one of the food that we encourage persons to they want especially in this time covid pandemic this is a really a great fruit to work with the leaves also can be used to make a stew so as for the cherry that's a very wonderful fruit over there you have pimento and pimento is what i call allspice and the reason we call it allspice is because it, it produces multiple multiple flavors some persons say when they smell they get um, vanilla some smell they get nutmeg some get almond some get cloves so it have multiple smells so it's a call all spice or pimento uh, in Jamaica pimento well not just Jamaica but let's just say all spices used all over for multiple purposes using different form of cooking Especially persons who do jerk, they love to use the pimento. Apart from the fact that it is used in a f in our cuisine, food and cooking food, it's also used in the production of perfume and the, 
the right boys when they're green they're green looking when they're younger they're green looking and as they get mature they are more purple more purple in color the right berries can be soaked into liqueur and um, when it's fermented um, it, it serves just like cocaine so that's another very good use for the pimento it is said that the Spanish were the one who brought the pimento here so the pimento have its genesis from the Spanish and not just the, the pimento leaves the pimento the pimento the, the limbs the wood from the pimento, the leaves, everything has been used in Jamaica. And for that reason, many of the pimento, many of the pimento trees throughout Jamaica is suffering the sad fate of being, um, being um, taken advantage by, by persons. Because one person come and take the leaves, another person come and take the, the, the branches. What do they use the leaves for? They use the leaves to make pimento oil. And that's exported oh, abroad, yeah. And the branches are used Still for cooking. So the cooking, while they use it to cook, it provides a certain fa um, flavor. flavor for the food. Okay. So in the, for example, jerk hunting, whether it's jerk chicken, jerk whatever, it provides a certain flavor. But so do you know how long a pimento tree takes to grow? Or well, I can, well, normally it will take about three years to oh, grow. three years. To grow, but to a small tree, then it eventually develops. But you can, uh, one thing I can tell you, it grows and stays for very long. It can stay for many, many years. This one was tree that doesn't die that easily. Provided anybody doesn't abuse it, doesn't die that easily. On my right over here, we have what we call fever grass or lemon grass. The lemon grass serves as a natural repellent. So, for example, for mosquitoes, if someone, um, if I need, for example, to use the, the lemon grass as a natural repellent, I could just simply for as a natural repellent, so I could use mosquitoes. So get rid of mosquitoes. Yeah, I could simply just do like that. From here by rubbing it in my hand like that, I could extract the oil from it. Oh. And I just simply rub it in my, in my hand. Yeah, like and that. I smell the strong mm -hmm. um, oh, aroma. Yeah. Right. So yes. so this is it and so this is how you can easily use as a natural repellent. Separate from that um the lemongrass well we use it um it is used to make um essential oils it is used um in perfumes some persons use it in cooking separate from that um it is used we use it for the bordering because um one it serves as a repellent for some insects yeah. but two it also forms as a border and uh, three animals like goat something don't like um lemongrass lemon no they don't like it so once they come to the fence they say they don't go any further they stay so that's a nice way to keep the goats away. This particular fruit is called loquat, L-O-Q-U-A-T. Loquat? Loquat. So it's like a plum. Those are the blossoms you're looking at right here. It's not a dominant fruit in Jamaica. Um, it, it's where, like, where is it normally sold? Uh, wow. It's, it's, uh, it's, from the, uh, it's more from the Asian continent. Okay. Um, there, but there, it's grown in America also. And there are a number of these fruit trees are in Jamaica, but it's not a, it's not a very well-known fruit. Oh. So we're coming down, so this is yet another planting. The difference about this planting is that... So why, I never know that the planting tree looks like a banana tree. Yeah, it looks like a banana tree. The, different, the only difference is, is like the, the color of the skin it is a little bit more red in most cases. Oh. But this is also a different planting. This planting, we call this one One Hand Bandit, because it has, it, be, it, it has just one hand. Regular banana our planting has many has a bunch. Yes. So it has many hands. This one has only one hand. Okay. Normally fingers can grow up to two feet. Okay. So we call it one hand bandit. So it's like a it's a planting or a giant planting. Well, I think it's the first I'm seeing a planting tree. Well. Mm -hmm. Alright, and then over here this is what we call sweet sap or sugar upper. So this is a green one right here. The sweet sap. Our sugar upper. All right, and um, next to sweet sap is over there. We have call that one custard apple, and the international scene both are interchangeable. So, on the international scene, where's so the custard apple? This is oh, over here. Yeah, it's a custard apple tree. But both are interchangeable on the international scene. And the international scene, if you, for example, if you should type in custard apple, you would see either of them comes up. Right? Right, that's how it works. But traditionally in Jamaica, um, Jamaican traditional called uh, custard apple kosu, 
and in Jamaica we call um, sweet sap, sweet sap, but other areas of the Caribbean it's called sugar apple. What kind of tree is this? Um, pomegranates. Pom pomegranates. Pom pom it's a fruit? Yeah man, well here it is over here. Again, the pomegranate is rich in antioxidant, rich in vitamin C. So here right over here, this is a baby pomegranate right here. Pomegranates. You see it before Amor? Yes. Where? When they open the garden. Oh. What is this used for? It's just like a regular fruit. Some people love to use to make it make a drink. Some people just eat it as it is. Yeah. It, it's generally uh, when it's ripe it's uh, it's normal like yellow or little reddish like. But the, the skin is a little bit tough. Oh, okay. On the inside it's pretty much like guava. Okay. On the inside, so you have the, it's more like the seeds on the inside that you really partake of. This is a popular fruit in Jamaica. Yeah, pomegranate, and it's used to make our. Uh, well, this is a popular drink, pomegranate drinks. Oh, I yeah. never tried a drink before. Yeah. So this is a baby pomegranate right here, and um, on the farm, what we do right now, we it, the farm serves as a educational hub. So from time to time, you'll have individual groups, schools, university comes in learn about the fruits, learn about the vegetables, the herbs. We also have, a, have sheep and property or resident sheep and people come and learn about that. We learn about the, uh, the nutritional value, we learn about the medicinal value of the plants and it's like that. Most time we're here, it's an interactive tour. So when we're here, persons share with us and we share with them. So here we have what we call guava. And guava, guava generally they are rich in vitamin C, rich in antioxidants. Again, another great fruit to have. Um, help to build your immune system. Apart from the, well, normal guava takes about three years to bear. And apart from the nutritional value of the guava, the leaves also are very good in terms of from a medicinal standpoint. Because the, the leaves can be used if you have a person having a diarrhea. Traditionally, you boil the leaves and you make a tea and um, it can easily help you get rid of that. So that's where the guava come in. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so, so that's the guava right there. Then There are some ears that were planted before some, so the ears that were planted before now, they are the ones that have more fruit. Alright, so we're going to be going down to the farm. So we talk about the guava, we're going to, well we head right over here, now we have, we have what we call it, but these are, we have banana, and you have different, different variety of banana. This type of banana is called plantain. These are you looking at, these are the suckers. Oh, this is a plantain? Yeah, this is a plantain. This similar to the banana. Right, so we have different varieties, these are what we call suckers. And these three suckers are, um, we have two different varieties of suckers. You have sword suckers and you have water suckers. Sword suckers, as you can see, the shape of it, the shape of it uh, resembles a sword, and for that reason it's called sword suckers. Oh, so this is a sword sucker? Sword suckers. All of these three are sword suckers. Normally the water suckers, you just get rid of them because it, um, they don't serve much purpose. They take longer to, to grow, bear. longer to bear, anything like that, and are less um, productive. Okay. And one of the key about banana is that um, within the banana root, they try to minimize the number of suckers within the root. Okay. Two to three is maximum, because the more suckers in the root, you're going to take more nutrients to, to, for the banana, and the banana is going to be less. So the less the suckers, it works better. Okay. And banana normally take nine months to grow. Nine what, months? Nine, how many months does a plant then take? Same. All the banana family, same thing. And once it, when it bears, once it dies. The beer once and dies. The banana? Yeah, beer once and dies. Okay, guys, thank you for tuning in to part one of a two part program. I do hope that you find this program interesting and you have benefited the best way possible. Tune in to part two as we continue to tour and explore the Bluefields Organic Farm.